Hi, this is Mark Laughlin with the Ambidextral Gunfighter. The do a comparison. Springfield Armory Hellcat versus SIG P365, the whole series, XL, the standard, SAS, whatever. Now, because most citizen self-defense gunfights are at very close range, being ambi with a handgun is maybe not quite as important compared to like a carbine. But learning to be ambidextrous on a carbine will make it will make becoming pistol ambi quite easy. And once ambi, I think there's some advantages to being for primary presentation and carry left-handed. One, it leaves your stronger, for most people, right hand for fighting. And the right hand, because of that, is more likely to suffer an injury. And if you're stupid enough to punch somebody with a closed fist into their skull, good chance you're gonna break some fingers. Fingers that might be important for operating a pistol. So therefore, fight with the right hand, shoot with the left. Also, for motorcycle riders, where you require on a motorcycle in order to operate a motorcycle you do need at minimum to have one hand on the throttle and then to operate the front brake right-handed and that can be leave your left hand free when on a motorcycle and then for law enforcement if you're doing a traffic stop and you're approaching a vehicle uh, you have a better angle coming from left-handed to the driver's side window than you do if you are pulling your weapon from the right hand side between these two pistols, the Springfield Armory Hellcat and the Sig Sauer P365 series, the Hellcat pretty much edges out the whole 365 line on a rounds per size and weight analysis. And it, on my spreadsheet uh, with the link below, it on raw data it, it uh, exceeds the Sig, and on weighted rounds per ounce in size it exceeds the Sig. However, on the kinetic energy per size and weight, the Hellcat and the SIG XL, 365XL, are pretty much identical. Now the Hellcat, being the same overall size pretty much as the standard SIG P365, but yet holds 10% more ammo, that's not insignificant. That's um, a nice benefit. But the SIG is a little more svelte than the Hellcat, despite the, being the key measurements, the pistol grip size and the slide, the, the width, being pretty much the same between the two, the SIG is a little more svelte. It, if they were women, the SIG would be kind of a hot, athletic, kind of borderline anorexic model, while the Hellcat is that more voluptuous, curvy woman. But despite that, key CCW dimensions, grip height, and width, they're pretty much, pretty much the same. So what are the AM gun separators between these two pistols? For me, one of the key failures of the SIG is its poor magazine release. Now I mean poor in as in that it requires basically giving your opponent the fingers. So, so once you've done a mag dump with your SIG on your opponent, you have to kind of give him the finger to get it clear of this opposite side in order to operate the mag. Now that's a kind of a minor issue. The, the Hellcat, you can maintain a firm grip on the pistol. You're kind of really your standard grip and release the magazine very easily. SIG, I have to get this finger out of the way and then can drop the magazine. Now that's 
It's certainly you can train around that. In fact, uh, both my kids who own SIG 365 XLs, you'll see them when they do a mag chain, they kind of do the standard, you know, grip shift and middle finger kind of clear in order to operate the mag magazine release. Now, that's just one part of the, the uh, mag button. The key part, uh, the more worrisome part in my opinion, is the fact that this the SIG mag button is a little more exposed to causing an accidental disengagement of your magazine. And you end up fighting with a pistol with the magazine like that, and basically you have whatever you have in the, however many rounds you have in the chamber, that's how many rounds you have to fight with. Usually gonna be one or none. The Springfield Armory Hellcat, its mag, re mag release button is much better protected. Of course, both of these could benefit with a paddle magazine release, which would be exceptionally well protected by the holster. The other thing I like about the Hellcat is it has these nice textured landing points for your trigger finger and for when you're doing the two-handed thumbs forward grip, a landing point for it as well. And that's just a nice little ergonomic feature that to me just slightly makes the Hellcat a little bit better than the SIG in that regard. Slide serrations are where the Hellcat, I think, is uh, just did not do quite as well. The SIG has much, much grippier slide serrations and will be much better to operate the slide when uh, your hands are bloody. Like if you punch somebody in those, now you got blood all over your hands and you're trying to now operate the slide, it's probably gonna slip off on the, on the Hellcat much better chance of getting a bite on these really aggressive serrations on the SIG. Other thing about the Hellcat is, is um, what kind of adds a little bit to its girth. It's not a whole lot, but it does have this slide fence. And it's perfectly mirrored on both sides, which if you've been following my channel, you know I uh, perfectly mirrored is important for being ambidextrous. Now the advantage of that is that it helps keep this support side thumb and then your trigger finger off of the slide. Now, of course, the trigger finger is not that important, but keeping this thumb from not coming in contact with the slide while it's uh, cycling, it's kind of important. I mean, with this fence, even it can drag a little bit on the slide, not be an issue. Whereas on this, the SIG, it's basically from the grip frame up into the slide, it's identical. There's no, there's no there's no tactile uh, fence to keep you off of the slide. Now, of course, you can dig in your thumb into the, the pick rail there and use that as your landing, landing point, but the, uh, you can get onto the slide and perhaps uh, reduce its cycling effectiveness. One thing is that the SIG has been engineered internally to be a little more compact. You'll notice that the height here is less, it's about a tenth of an inch less than the Hellcat. And that's done with some pretty significant engineering achievements inside the pistol, both in the slide and in the frame. Now the SIG actuator for the striker uh, block plunger, the striker safety plunger, is, uh, is a more advanced design that kind of pivots in a way that translates horizontal movement of the trigger bar into vertical movement to push up against the, the uh, safety plunger. The Hellcat uses a much simpler and a little bit maybe cruder, uh, just where it's dragging across, uh, horizontally across the, the uh, safety plunger. Now, theoretically, that would translate into the SIG having a better trigger. But in our testing experience, most of the shooters, if they like one trigger over another at all, they slightly favor the Hellcat. Now, in sum, in my view, that extra round, coupled with the better button magazine release, gives the Hellcat the edge over the SIG 365 series. But my SIG owning 365 sons disagree. My sons, former Dogs of War paintball teammates, and Project Appleseed Rifleman Qualified are both featured on the amgun.com ambidextral paintball page, where you'll find my son Brian's article on the importance of being ambidextrous, and the video clip of Brock's ambidextrous maneuvering up a paintball field.
Now, Brian's paintball team uh, won a Colorado paintball championship series in 2018. When the targets are shooting back, they are a couple of the best gunfighters I've seen. In fact, one day, while I was watching Brian's team compete, Brian won two two-on-ones and a one-on-one -on -one to help carry his team into the day's finals. So, let's see what they have to say about SIG 365 versus Springfield Armory Hellcat. Hello, this is Mark Laughlin with the Ambidextra Gunfighter. We're going to do a comparison of the SIG P365 XL and the Springfield Armory Hellcat. I have uh, two guests with me today, my sons, Brock uh, and Brian, both uh, big SIG fanboys and former Dogs of War paintball players, uh, teammates. Now, let's look at, at one of the first things you look at is uh, the grip. Uh, the feel of the Hellcat, it's got a very nice grip. It's uh, got uh, what I call landing points that are textured on both sides, which I like for both uh, thumb placement and indexing your finger, trigger finger. Uh, the Hellcat, I mean the SIGs do not have that, but they do have very... Uh, there are points where you can use your finger. Yeah, <laughs> there's <your> points <laughs> on your, uh, I guess your rail. Uh, yeah index on your rail index and your thumb would rail. dig in on the rail as well. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise they're kind of the same dimensions except the, the 365. It's a 365 with a regular, well it's an XL frame with a 365 basically an, an upper, a slide. Yeah, <laughs> a slide. slide yeah, so the overall length, of the barrel length is the same as the Hellcat or the 365 standard but with the XL grip length. Yeah. And you like that because... Uh, I mean, basically for carrying, I think it's a little bit more comfortable. The barrel is not as long. Um, so if you're kind of skinny like me, it'll dig you right in your hip or kind of below your hip into your leg. Um, this doesn't do that as much. Uh, you still have the longer grip frame for the extra ammo, and I think the more important part is better grip. For shootability. For shootability. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I know a lot of people don't really care much about that, but... It bothers me not being able to hold on to it properly or have that pinky falling off. That I, I hate that. <laughs> you guys are concerned about the pinky. I'm, I don't know, the old man of the group. I don't mind sticking my pinky underneath the bottom myself. And uh, I don't, it doesn't bother me as much. Of course, I can go with the 13 round mag on the Hellcat, and we've got that uh, basically the same grip length as the uh, P365XL. As far as texture, what do you think? I've you never cared about texture, yeah. to be honest. Uh, Even on Glocks, much, yeah. um, you know, I did some stempling on a Glock 19 a little while back and just didn't really notice a huge difference. It didn't matter. Um, then again, if you're not covered, your hands aren't bloody or something, maybe that'll come into play, but um, as far as texturing goes on both, I think they're it's pretty comparable. It yeah. Matter. yeah. Well, I don't feel like I need the texture points. Up you, here. You don't need those landing yeah. points. You don't need the landing points on the grips. Um, the I did stipple a Glock like this one time, and that did make a difference on those. I like it for uh, getting, because I do press my thumb. If I'm doing the thumb sports, I'm, I'm usually one handed shooting generally, but if I do press my thumb in there, and then it's kind of a, a grippy point for that, it doesn't fall off as easy. But with these small guns, it's it is hard no matter what. Yeah. I mean, it, it wants, to, it wants to come out of that, up. yeah. But I don't. You can it. grip put your thumb on the rail, on the side here on the rail, and it works. I don't notice that it makes that much of a difference. I think it all comes back to a grip here. How well you got it in your hand here. And I think these curves here really lend well to that. I don't get a lot of flip out of these guns because I think yep. it has that almost like a belly that mm -hmm. comes out there that fits right in there. I know a lot of people com complain and say these small guns, particularly these uh, two models, are very snappy. I just haven't found them to be that un you know hard to control. I, I did not pretty, like that. You did not? You thought it snappy? With the uh, longer magazine, you can get away from that a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but with the pinky off, I feel like that one wants to roll. The SIG, I do like how it's narrower right in there. It does feel like it wants to 
get up into the web of your thumb a little bit better. Well, that prevents that roll right there because mm -hmm. your hand's going right up into right underneath the slide. Yeah. Right up under there. Also, where this trigger right here, that little thing right there, gets right underneath the trigger guard, gives you better grip too, I think. Yeah, and then the Hellcat has this kind of a shelf that kind of guards the yeah. magazine release that your thumb can rest on to help provide help some that. control. So you do kind of have that here. Not as much, but you do have one there. But no stippling on it or anything to help give you grip. But I've found that on both of them, when I bring them up with eyes closed and I open my eyes, both of them, the sights are perfectly level. Yeah, I have no problem with either of the sights. Either sides. one of them. Either, both sights are perfect. It's, it's there. Point ability, I think, is really good. Now, we talk about the SIG being a little bit narrower than the Hellcat, and it's largely because of this fence. And that's kind of a part of, uh, uh, it keeps my thumb a little bit off the slide a little bit, but it does add to width, so it's not maybe not as concealable per se, you know, not as spelt and sexy I don't as know if it's really concealability, because I want to say you could carry a Glock 19, most yeah. people don't notice. Yeah. The main thing is what it feels. Yeah. Especially if you're wearing skinny jeans like me, the wider you go, the worse it gets. Mm -hmm. The tighter your pants you get, buy a pair of pants that's like a, a size higher to get those wider guns in there. What I think the, the fence does is kind of give some of the benefits of the, of the other model we don't have of the SIG, the, the SIG P365XL, which has the flush controls. The, the SAS. The SAS, yeah, the SA, yeah, the SAS has this flush Take down lever and then basically almost a non existent slide release. Uh, so it provides some of that snag free functionality by being just a little bit wider. Oh, slide release. It's kind of a pretty significant appearance difference between the slide releases on these yeah. two, but in use, I just haven't found them to be that. They're I mean, not that different. This uh, actually reminds me of a Glock, how you have that yep. kind of almost feels cheap <laughs> to be honest <laughs> uh, with the Glocks because of the way that they run they just have that little chunk of metal sticking over yeah. and it has that same and you dig it in with your, your the knuckle or your thumb yeah. rather than the tip on the on the now, I will say with that one I don't have I did have to change my grip from shooting Glocks with this because of that slide release here I did not have that you had to bring your thumb over I had to bring my thumb yeah. over and, and you weren't I would there. actually it would fire and then I would hit it and it would lock forward back forward hmm. Did not have that issue. <laughs> so it's not the only one though. Go with the VP9 as well. <laughs> now the uh, one thing I've got a probably my biggest complaint for me for the Hellcat is the slide. I call them slide decorations versus the slide serrations on the Sig, which is a nice angled. They're kind of cut so that pulling this way they get a good bite. But if you push this way, they're more, uh, they're letting things slide through a little more. Because these are they're useless. Yeah, useless. <laughs> Especially if you had bloody hands, slippery hands, whatever. And why did they put them on the, the RMR part of it? Yeah, so the, I well, guess of course, for some of that. The, the overhand, stuff. yeah, that stuff. Well, you need it with this kind of stuff because this is almost non existent. Yeah. But anyway, to me, I think uh, Hellcat uh, really failed on that part. Now, as far as uh, sights, uh, I think you're, the SIGs both have X-ray sights, the tritium sights. Now, this has the tritium in the front and then just the use in the back. As far as usefulness, uh, I find the sighting system on all of them certainly capable. Um, the sights on this are a little bit taller, and that's so that they can uh, co-witness co co with an RMR. Um, Whereas these are a little bit approaching, especially yours on the short slide version, are approaching that SAS type sleekness. Yep. Now the trigger, we talked about that a bit. Uh, the trigger, uh, one of your friends we were shooting out the other day, and he actually liked the trigger on the Hellcat better. Um, I actually have no preference. I like the triggers on the SIGs just as well as the Hellcat. Um, the SIGs do have that kind of weird pong, kind of pong <laughs> sound. I don't know, just kind of weird. And it doesn't feel like a pistol when it goes off, but as far as feel, it's a, it's, they're comfortable. They I feel like there is take up in the SIGs trigger. And there's a little bit of take up. 
Now the SIG, of course, doesn't have that trigger safety. No. Uh, so I guess for an impact like that, if you hit really hard, supposedly the trigger weight could carry down and fire. I don't think the these are SIG yeah. P320s. They're, yeah. they're drop safe. Yeah. <laughs> now the uh, Hellcat has the conventional kind of Glock trigger safety, which is, I mean, I, I don't notice it shooting. I don't notice I don't the difference think. when I'm ever shooting. But there is the issue, I don't know if you guys knew about this, but you, if you push the trigger sideways, I mean just a little bit sideways, and then pull it back, and then try to operate it, it locks up. No. So basically if you were to uh, do some kind of panic firing where you don't quite get a proper straight mm -hmm. rack press, you could potentially lock up the trigger on this. And that's, that's a known issue with the elk. Yeah. Now a lot of people have been taken and there's a little, the edge of the back of the trigger safety, you can file it back just a little tiny bit, round it off a little bit, and it eliminates that problem. I've been leaving mine the same. I wouldn't Stop. be filing triggers. That's yeah. like, but I've been, I've been <laughs> leaving, it'll probably wear that way eventually anyway, but I've been leaving mine the same because I wanted to see if I ever actually experienced it shooting. You know, I, I can induce the issue by like focusing on it, pushing it sideways, pulling it back, and I can lock it in place, but I've never... And nobody else has ever experienced that. It's intrigued. been a big issue on the on the internet, the YouTube stuff, you know. Yeah, I mean, as far as triggers goes, if it's not basically not a single action, there's really not a lot of difference, unless you're getting into like the ultra compacts. Now, I think we, uh, both of you having VP9s, are probably fans of the Paddle Magazine release on like the VP9. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I think I think the the Sig, if it had a Paddle Magazine release, I think given its trigger guard design, would really, could adopt one really well. So the way it's trigger when you, when it's not, after you fired it, when it resets, there's a lot of room there for a Paddle Magazine release. Now the Hellcat, when you fire it, the trigger sets back a little bit, so it would be a little bit of an obstruction for a Paddle well, Magazine. If you look right here, it's even built right here. Yeah. Right off the trigger guard. So, it would be very easy for them easy to Easy for them that. to add that, to make that. And I think, to me, that would be a huge improvement for either of any of those pistols, and I think SIG could do it with relatively relative ease. Now, one of the things, that, as far as a button magazine release, I think the Hellcat has probably the best button magazine release of any pistol, period, of any that I've ever owned for a button mag. It's, now, what I like is that it's out of the way from accidental disengagement if you push up against it. The SIGs do poke out a little bit, and if I were to put this in my pocket and then roll around the ground, I could disengage that and end up with the magazine just, you know, inject, ejected a little bit, just like that, so just disengaged, which leaves you in a gunfight with however many rounds you have in the chamber. <laughs> I've which is usually I have not one. run into that issue. You've not run into I've run into it lots of times, but I do pocket carry, so that may be the difference. And then I also left hand side carry, pocket carry, and then left side carry if I'm doing inside the waistband. So that does put the mag release outside here where it's well, in the way. <laughs> yeah. I always and right hand carry, and all of my controls are protected. Yeah. If, you're doing it. if I was doing it on this side, maybe I would have less troubles. Now, I could potentially swap the magazine over the other side, but I like having my button mag on the same side as my slide release. Which brings me to another thing. I think the Hellcat could potentially, if they added an ambi slide release, that would be pretty sweet. Uh, they have the room. Yeah, if they, but do it, because you have, they have the room on this, with because the, they have mirrored the shelf perfectly on both sides, so a slide release over here would be not any additional width for the Hellcat. Now on the Springfield, uh, to keep maintain, it, adding a slide release over here would be making it a little bit wider. You not know, yeah. huge, but yeah. It, so I think the, the or the the Sig with an Ambi Mag release and Paddle Mag release would be pretty sweet. Not necessary on these compact guns, though. I mean, if you're looking for that, yeah. go with I mean, full-size guns. But, I mean, to me, it, it, the paddle magazine release would be nice just for that eliminating, that completely eliminating the potential of a disengaged magazine. Because now you're, that trigger guard being fully covered by your holster, you know, in this case, here's a Barai holster, if that was a paddle magazine release, it'd be completely pr protected yeah, from disengagement, accidental disengagement. 
again, I don't have any problems with this. Yeah. Now, of course, works fine. how many magazines do you carry with you when you're carrying your pistol? Zero. zero. And zero. <laughs> zero. Yeah. And I usually carry zero as well. Although I find it's with, better, it's with better the, to, to just carry your gun with one mag than worry about two and not carry it. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, well, I, I did carry, carry an extra magazine. An extra one. I did carry an extra magazine when we went and attended the uh, Gillette riots <laughs> with uh, Antifa coming in town, but which turned out to be nothing. But yeah, there was no Antifa. Yeah, no Antifa, <laughs> unless they were on the uh, embedded in the yeah. Trump rally, <laughs> which is the typical thing to do. Okay, shooting experience. Um, Sig beats it. Every day. Every day. <laughs> every day. In every way. I don't, I don't see that. I, don't, I mean, I, to me, they sh I could take these two and shoot them, and I could almost not tell the difference other than, I mean, it's up, it's a longer grip. It does make things a little easier, but this shootability. I mean, even I mean, with, just, even with the extended mag, like you said, with the extended mags, they add that wiggle in there. So you yeah. can feel that every time you fire the gun, you feel that yeah. movement in the magazine. I don't notice that much because I'm remember the old was the Glock 36 days. You don't have that vibes. It's just it a perfect you. grip for your hand. But with the extended mag, it's fairly similar. The only thing I don't like about shooting these is it really reminds me of a PF9 because it's so <laughs> squared back up in here where your weathering like of your PF hand nine. meets. It reminds me of that PF9, like just getting snake bit in the hand every time you're shooting it. <laughs> Uh, whereas these are very smooth, they thin it out in the back, it just drops right in your hand. I feel like this one just does not quite have that going for it. Yeah, I do think it would be cool if they could take this and slim that out even a little bit more to more, be more like yeah. that. Um, I did measure... Somebody with bigger hands may not have this issue. And we talk about the size and weight, we talk about typically for uh, pistols we're looking at grip height and then basically the width. And when I did the average of the width of these, uh, from the front to the rear on the 365 versus the Hellcat, they're pretty much identical. The what we see is a difference is the, In the polymer, the height here. And the polymer feels and then wider, or it's thick, or it's yeah, thicker. And I did do a circumference. It's not what they did here. It's not that. It's the shape. Yeah. The shape of this on this back strap is very squared off, mm -hmm. and that just does not lead to a good shooting experience, I don't think. I think you're losing a lot of the really like tight feels. Now, I have pretty small hands, and maybe that's the problem. Maybe you've got meatier hands, you don't have to worry about that. It doesn't hurt or anything, but it's definitely something that uh, think, adds to it just feeling not quite right. I think a lot of people probably noted that for between the, these micro compacts, people with bigger hands are probably going to like the Hellcat yeah. a little bit better than the SIG. You get the SIG. I measured the circumference of the grip, and... Uh, it was a half a centimeter bigger on the Hellcat than the SIG, so the SIG is a little bit more I mean, that's overall. Well, look, if you look here, you see what tapers towards the yeah. slide. Yeah. Yeah. That's the difference that yeah. this does not do. Yeah. It does not taper towards the slide. And that adds, I think, for a little bit harsher shooting. I mean, it doesn't hurt or anything. But it just doesn't feel as good. <laughs> it just feels Six feels like space guns. They just yeah. fall right in your hand. And, you're good. Yep. and you guys, uh, of course, being from paintball, well, we when we were in the sport, you kind of still play a little bit, but uh, we came in with the Die Matrix DM3, which was a big blocky gun, and I'll cut it, not to make the Hellcat to be this massively blocky gun like that, but that's kind of what that's this feels like. Versus. This is blockier versus. This feels like a shocker in the paintball world back impulse in the day. Shocker. Yeah, impulse shocker. So, but they were both effective on the paintball field. Yep. The shocker just felt like you yeah. say, a space gun. Yep. Yeah, it's a space gun. <laughs> so reliability. I've, I've had, had zero problems, problems with any. I've had mine. zero problems. With the, yeah. I have noticed in winter when shooting gloves, heavy gloves with the SIGs, it will catch the slide. I don't know if it's an issue of spring strength, maybe or something like that, but if you have thick gloves on, that slide can slow down enough to where it won't go back go into back batting. In batting you, have you have to kind of tap it a little bit. It's probably that lube you're using. I have using fraud well, lube instead of uh, When we were out Century last time, Solutions. that Century Solutions was on my slide. Was it? Where my buddy was having issues with that. Um, also, you cannot limp wrist these. You simply cannot do it. If you go limp wrist these, which is what I think he was doing, because I couldn't repeat it at the time. Um, 
they will definitely have issues going to the battery. You'll get like a go back, and then it'll kind of pop, and then snap forward just a slightly. Uh, kind of running a similar issue if you got a completely full magazine where that spring is at its max, and you insert it, you have it inserted in your pistol, and you try to do a chamber check, and you, you got a round in there, and you try to do a chamber check, that extra spring tension on the on there sometimes these pistols not, not want to go in the battery, so you do have to kind of give them a little bit of tap. Um, Generally, this one goes in the battery. I, I suspect generally those do too. I haven't had but that, that issue. Is an issue. Like I said, I've, I've only had this on issue. On small, with, high capacity with pistols. Big, thick gloves when it's really cold and you have something that's kind of catching on this and causing issues. He had the issue, I think, because he was limp wristing it. And once we kind of started doing that, he didn't have it as much for it all. So. Quality. Now, these are American made. Real honest to God, American made pistols, the SIG 365 series. The Hellcat is a manufacturer in Croatia for a Springfield Armory. Actually, it's a company called HS, and it's their model H11 in Europe. Um, but I feel like the quality is pretty. Build quality is pretty identical. good. Now, do you think the engineering? We took the we took the slides off, uh, did the field strip, and looking inside, you can see the engineering to make everything more compact on the SIG. I mean, it's like they made every single effort to accomplish that with the uh, the drops, the safety, the, the, the trigger pull, everything. Right. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, I would say that like this is a generation ahead of us as far as like uh, the internals. I don't know if I call it a generation. I would say the internals, yeah, yeah it's, everything is smaller. Yeah. It's more compact and tight. This is more in the line with like the Glock 19 as far as internals go. No, it's pretty much the... The way this actuates the safety plunger is a little bit, it's kind of crude compared to the SIG. The SIG actually takes, whereas this is using rearward motion across that safety plunger, those trans, those have a little pivot in there that transfers that rearward motion into vertical motion against the pin. Mm -hmm. And I think that gives, theoretically would give the SIG a better trigger than the Hellcat. Although in actual use I don't really see that. Yeah. So. Like I said, if you're not using single action, then triggers are kind of moving. I think it just comes down to how compact they can make the parts. Yeah. And how they've stuffed everything into this much smaller piece of polymer than they did with this one. Now, of course, I would prefer that this was truly American made. So to me, that's a bonus on the 365s yeah. there, truly America. So that, that, that's better. Not a requirement yeah. to me, but... Yeah, <laughs> not a total requirement, but it's nice, you know, if there's World War IV or whatever, and we need to get parts for our pistols, we can probably Six get our parts. We're going to have our parts <laughs> for SIG, so... <laughs> now, the one thing I uh, started off with on my very first review on the Hellcat was uh, referencing its um, kind of a salute to American history and its namesake, the Grunman F6F Hellcat. And to me, that's kind of cool that they did that. It's kind of like a Project Appleseed, you know, a Project Appleseed where we have rifle marksmanship clinics to bring people in and let them hear a little bit about history. And so, to me, that's kind of cool that SIG did that, and it kind of almost makes up for not being American. -made. You mean the Hellcat? Yeah, the Hellcat. Hellcat. Yeah, it makes that. So it kind of makes up for yeah. not being American. -made. So you know, a little salute to the F6F Grunman aircraft. So. But it's not the best one. <laughs> Not the best one. P-38 Lightning is the best aircraft the, ever built. The the highest kill to loss ratio was the Hellcat. Over the Lightning, I doubt it. Yeah, it was. It was, it was, it was, it was called the Zero Killer. <laughs> Heavy it armor, was. 20 millimeter. I was guns. stunned when I found that out. I, when I grew up building model airplanes, I always the, the Hellcat. I built one, but I thought it was like this crappy little stumpy looking plane. <laughs> but it turned out it had the highest kill ratio of any of the. Because it was the most commonly used plane. It wasn't just that. It was uh, <laughs> it was the highest kill ratio. We'll have to, we'll have to build one. Yeah. Uh, MPV model and see how it flies in comparison to what we could do one. Yeah, because I have a Thunderbolt downstairs, right? It you know, puts a pilot inside of it with a Hellcat pistol. Yeah. And then the ATF put a knock and a pistol on the plane. All right, we didn't say that. Okay, versatility. I think. The XL is versatile from inside the waistband or whatever, concealed carry, bedside, to uh, uh, off body carry. Uh, the Hellcat can kind of do the same with its extended mag and you know, it becomes kind of a bedside carry pistol uh, with a short barrel. A longer barrel XL you know, becomes almost a truly 
But I think that like, these carry better again because everything is rounded. When you're dealing with square edges, anytime you're carrying, especially in waistband, um, they dig you. They also print a lot more. Like, yeah, sure, this, this thing's kind of large, but it's also rounded. Mm -hmm. A lot more rounded, and that creates the shirt will naturally like, fold and that kind of stuff. And the rounded stuff kind of hides that a bit better. Whereas this thing is just boxy. I think like the Glock's grip is actually more round. <laughs> <laughs> I like my Hellcat. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Sig 365 too. But uh, for me, the button magazine release, I mean, it's an extra freaking round compared to you guys. So yeah, there, but, take mean, that. 10% better. 10%. 10%. 10 better. One round better. or carry it every day. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, we've got two great pistols here, 365 series, Hellcat, I'm sure the Hellcat will probably be coming out with a long slide version, maybe an extended, you know, pistol version, you know, capacity version. Uh, I know they did just release the FDE version of this, so, you know, we'll probably see an expanded product line just like the SIG. I would like to see the SAS type sights, either on a SIG 365 or a Hellcat. Uh, for me, from the point shooting side of thing, I think that'd be great. But yep. um, Anyway, what other pistols have we got that even come close to these? Glock 43. But it sucks on the Six capacity. Rounds. Yeah, that's, Seven with that's, one in the pipe. Now, when the uh, Shield Arms releases the, the magazines for that, that's going to bring that back to life. And that would include maybe the MC1SC by Mossberg. But what, other, what else could be in, the, in this category that... I guess you could say the shield, but it suffers the same shield, problem. Yeah, same the, capacity uh, issue. Yeah, the, Side, the, the weight, or rounds per size and weight, these guys just blow everybody away. Right. Although the VP9 with this new 17 round that mags. Is, but that's a big gun though. It, yeah, big gun, but it's rounds per size and weight are pretty good. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty good. <laughs> for 17, 17 yeah, well, 18 18 rounds. You're not going to have that on your purse no. every day. That Very few good. people are going to carry A lot of people claim, you know, oh yeah, I carry my VP9 with three extra magazines. And, okay, yeah, the backpack <laughs> yeah. or something like but that. You know. Not many people are actually truly do it on a day-to-day -day yeah. basis. Yeah. I mean, you declare your 1911 all the time. Yeah, occasionally yeah, you carried that yeah. for a long time. For I mean, while. it can be done. It, it's, and I always liked. I was like, damn. <laughs> it's not the most comfortable after a while. It, most things that weight will get to you. Yeah, but at the time you're always like, kind of making excuses for it. Oh, it's like, yeah. no, it is thin. It is. It is thin. Kill, kill your soul and whatever. It, it is thin, and it does fit in the skinny jeans really well. It's just the the weight will get you, and as far as the grip goes, it's very long. Especially if you're wearing like jersey shirts that are yeah. kind of form fitting, that you, you can't really get away with it that well. Um, so you're moving away from that. Was that to the 365, or you, you went to the 43 and after that? that? Came out. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was one of the first like really really good compact. Because honestly, I liked carrying the 1911 more than the Glock 19. It was more comfortable than the Glock really? 19. Hmm. Well, here, it's just thinner. It's yeah. thinner, and that's what yeah. mattered. Um, I'd have to buy like. Two, pants, two sizes up on pants to fit that stupid Glock 19 yeah. on there. It's a thick Or go outside the waistband and just yeah. cover with yeah. the shirt. Yeah. That's just not in the cars. So, mm -hmm. so 43 to a SIG is what they ended up with. And that was purely for the round count. And then um, I think, so, I think uh, the triggers are 10% better on the round count. 10% better. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with minus one. Minus one with for perceivable comfort. Yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> All right, so I think that concludes our review. I think we've conclusively proved that the Springfield Armory Hellcat is the top of the no. totem pole for a Micro 9. So. No. And no. Disagree. Fanboys. Sick fanboys. I'm not a sick fanboy. I, I talked a lot of trash on Sick until this kind of came out. Yeah. The 320, garbage. The 226 yeah. is awesome. It's too, but waste of money. They are really nice though. Not as reliable as Glocks, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, I like the 226. Until this came out, it was all about the Glock. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, back to. Motocross. Back to motocross. <laughs> well, there you have it. I hope this helped you decide which is the best concealed carry weapon pistol for your needs. It's Mark Laughlin with the Ambidextral Gunfighter. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.